Southern Vanguard Radio. This is DJ John Doe. And to the left Woo! of me is my man. Sneefy, sniffling, sneezy, coffee, Chino. <laughs> Hoping I ain't got that coronavirus <laughs> shit. <laughs> Cappuccino, me. Man, man motherfucker touched me. Uh, I was going Whoa, to. Whoa, what? Uh, pause. Hold up. <laughs> I was going uh I was going to the post office today, man, and it's uh the post office is over at Peachtree Center. So you had to go down the escalator like you going to the martyr train, but before you go down the other set of escalators, the post office is right there. So I'm on the escalator, minding my motherfucking business, man. Motherfucker come up behind me, touch me. Talking about, excuse me, let me get by. I'm like, man, don't touch me, man. You know what I'm that saying? Go on, go on and get by, man. Dude. I don't mean to be racist, now, but he looked a little Asian, man. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, I hope he ain't from the Wuhan <laughs> district. No, of, don't say I don't that. want don't that. Don't say that. Don't say All that. All over my polo sweater. I'm like, man. Don't touch me, dude. Now they're they actually they're already, they're already talking about how um how the corona there are issues um with um you know racial issues starting to crop up because oh of, it's bad and, it's and awful, I didn't man. I didn't mean nothing about it. No, you I, know, I know you I know you did, but a, it's interesting you say that because I just I just saw an article. That's about how it. it is. But I saw an article about the 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 that China is mad at the U.S. for not helping. Well, and they're also mad. They think we're we're uh, we're stoking the fire that we're causing right, panic right, that's unwarranted. Right. Which doesn't sound like America at all, does uh, it? Hell no. Nah. Doesn't sound like the U.S. The greatest at all. country on the world. <laughs> we would never. We would never. How dare you, we would China? Ne- we would never be involved in hyperbole or exaggeration no. or say some dumbass shit on the regular, hell ever. No, just keep your hogs <laughs> on the farm, not in the house with you. <laughs> we wouldn't have these goddamn problems. <laughs> Nah, I'm sorry. I, what, I know, what, are we, I, but what see, are we doing? To your point, to your point, I'm with you because you know, as you know, I have four young children, and yeah. uh, as someone so eloquently put it today, you know, they're a living, walking, breathing petri dish. Oh, and uh, my my poor wife works. Uh, she's a she's a uh, she's a director at a preschool, actually. So she's so a she she's around. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So you know, and I I got four kids from age three to fourteen. So I I Dude, run the game. Probably gamut. immune to the coronavirus. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll never I, get that. I hope shit. so. But but my <laughs> but one of one of my kids took an elbow to the mouth uh on a Saturday at a basketball game. Mm. And it was one of those things where you know when you know when you get an inj- uh, like a mouth injury and like your your yeah. uh, your teeth will bite your, your yeah, lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well we thought that the we thought that he had bit through his lip. Yeah. And when that happens, you more or less you gotta get stitches. Yeah, for sure. You gotta be careful about that stuff. It can get infected, it gets real nasty. So yeah. anyway, so we're like, Oh no, are we gonna go? You know, we're going to go get him checked out. Do we think, you know, we were or like, cause yeah. it's flu season, it's strep season. Oh, like, it's crazy. I'm not trying to go to, we are not trying to go to any emergency room nah. right now. So we made the decision that we needed to take him, right? We had some yeah. people at the, at the, at the, at the, um, at the basketball game look at it. They're like, yeah, you probably need to take him in, you know? Wow. So we took him in. I, I told, uh, I told him before we walk in, I said, look, man. If you've never listened to me ever before, this is the time you need to listen. Man, Do not touch a touch single thing. Put your hands in your pockets. Shit. I will open the door for you everywhere you go. Don't Do not touch, touch it. And don't sit down. <laughs> exactly. Stand your ass right exactly. here next to me. Exactly. I'm if in I here have like. to snatch the shit out of you, I will. <laughs> don't you move. <laughs> I already know that scene. He looked at me crazy. He's like, he's like, I think this is the they first don't get time. It. Yeah, because he, he's it. eight. And I, I, he looked at me for the first time this weekend, like, oh, this he, this guy's crazy. <laughs> you know, like this is my dad, and I love him, but this motherfucker's a little nuts. Like, so, <laughs> something not right with this guy. Hell yeah. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, yeah, I was in bed all day yesterday, man. I fought the hell out of this. I feel pretty good. I went to work today and all that. It's okay. cool, but well, I didn't nah, I, I didn't know you were under the weather. Nah, I think I, I think I did it to myself, man. You know, this crazy ass weather, man. And I was seventy one today. Yeah. Three when days I, ago it was forty. Yeah. Not even 70, three days ago. Seventy one. Yeah, it was this cold morning, as shit Saturday. Th- this morning it was thirty seven yeah. when I woke up. Got all the way up to seventy one <laughs> degrees. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> 
But yeah, man, I'm good. That's crazy. I'm good. I'm All good. right. Have What's a good up weekend? with you, uh, I'm, I'm doing well. I, I made it through my uh, dry January. I did not drink a drop of alcohol in mm-hmm. January. Nice. Uh, I celebrated appropriately on February 1st. Nice. But uh, now we're on. We're back on the wagon for we're a new on, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A so, new one. So I was, you know, I'm I'm dealing with a little something, and I decided to, to go dry February. All right. For Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and you decided to join me and you just I gonna, did. you just gonna keep it popping until your birthday. Until my birthday my birthday's March eighth. So what's I'm just up. gonna I'm just gonna set a, I'm just gonna set, kinda set a new goal for the eighth, which just happens to be a Sunday night. Okay. A Sunday oh, night March we go, 8th is a Sunday we night. Drop it off. <laughs> March eighth, goddamn! That's if we recording because I know you, you, you get oh, taken, we, we you get taken March care 8th. of on your birthday. We, we, we get, we get we like some motherfuckers I know. <laughs> but uh, nah, that's dope, man. That's yeah, dope. man. So I, this, this is gonna be fun, Meeks. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 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 a word to the wise, a little a little <laughs> yeah. disclaimer: the interviews, mix show, gonna sound a little different <laughs> this month. <laughs> Bear you, with us. You, 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 you'll be able to understand us. Yeah. There'll be a lot of clarity. Um, we'll, we'll try to entertain you best we can. Let's see if we can do it without the the help of uh, drugs. <laughs> be a nice little test I think test we're doing all right. I think, I think, I think, I think good, this, this interview intro, uh, this interview session intro yeah, is proven that. I think we good. We'll be all right, right, man. Good, y'all, stay, so. y'all stay tuned, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all yeah. right, so let's get down to business. This is a hip-hop podcast. Podcast. This is Southern Vanguard sure. Radio, and this is the first time you're listening. Welcome. Welcome. We drop twice a week on Tuesdays. It's a mix show, all the latest and greatest hip hop cut up by yours truly. Me and Mix just talking the awfulest bunch of shit you ever heard. Um, you know, usually we're drinking really good bourbon and really good beers, but we're just we're, we're going to switch it up a little bit here in 2020 and just try try to try to uh you know caffeine just try some free, different things. Yeah, what are you lime, drinking? I'm caffeine drinking free yeah. lemon lime soda. <laughs> Made with real sugar. <laughs> I'm drinking a Schweppes Diet Ginger Ale. Schweppes. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> Diet Ginger Ale. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so we have a mix show on Tuesdays. We have an interview session, kind of an, in, an in-depth joint uh, on Thursdays. Uh, last week, we had Wise P on. Great interview. Uh, great interview. Yeah. Uh, what we're up to episode 242 of the yeah. mix show this week. Yeah. Some 200 some odd interviews. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we just, uh, we just kind of, you know, turned the corner on our, on our fifth year anniversary back in January. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're just going to give you all that raw, you know, week after week, like we always do that Smithsonian great. And don't stop. Yeah. And, uh, mix we have. Oh, so real quick, uh, all the platforms, I don't know what you're listening on right now, but we're on all of them. SoundCloud, mix cloud, Stitcher radio. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and YouTube, and we have some affiliates as well. Yep, right ATL, ATLHipHop.com, I am Classic Raw Radio.net, Return of the Boom Bap, WRBB, uh, X Squad Radio, X Squad Affiliates, all those here in Atlanta, and then we venture out to the West Coast with Soul Public Radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm disappointed DJ Pocket's not in the house with us tonight. I know, man. Because Baltimore's in the house tonight. Yeah, this will be good, man. Got to give a big shout out real quick to Jerry. Jerry Graham. Jerry Graham. How you doing, for, my man? For for connect- <laughs> for 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 uh, for uh, for, uh, for connecting this with uh, with these guys. Um, Billy Graham, look good. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, these guys just dropped uh, a super dope LP. Uh, I guess this month, the last month, we'll, we'll get the details. We played a couple I saw of him joints on the about show. That shit too, so he is working. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um. You know, uh, so we had to get these brothers on the show. Uh, so without any further ado, the one and only Ralph Almighty of Dirt Platoon. Dirt Platoon, what's what up? What's good, y'all? What's, what is good? Southern Vanguard Radio, we finally made it here. Congratulations, <laughs> brothers. Y'all got a lot of accolades. Five years, yeah. 200 and something interviews. Yeah. Yeah, Both man. y'all sober. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're sober right now. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, but you got called so- back in a month, Ralph. Yeah, exactly. You get that, get that real... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that March the eighth, we'll call and just to wish you happy birthday, bro. This is a with y'all. That's what's up. Lock word. it in. That'll be dope. Word, word. Uh, so, Raph, let's just uh, let's just start off with the new stuff, man, and we can get into some history too. We we kind of like let's to hear go. about the new stuff and the and the um 
kind of you know where uh, where uh, you know where you came from. But uh, the new okay. re- new album's out right now. We played a couple of joints. Uh, you know, we're big fans of the new record, um, and you know, just the crew in general, and just Baltimore, that Baltimore underground right now. We're fucking with tough right now. So thank you, um, thank you, bro. Hey, yeah. but real quick, Rab, where is Snook at tonight? Snook, what? He, he he might have made some bets last night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know if he's paying out or getting paid. So tonight he couldn't make it. I apologize for that, but I think I'm enough. I can I can I can tell y'all the story. Tell him we said what's up, man. I got y'all. Word. No problem. He been he been M I A the whole day, but it was all good. I had y'all on the calendar, so we just gonna do this tonight. Dope. All right, beautiful. Let's go. All right, Raph. So let's uh, let's start things off with the new LP. And, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. All right. Well, the new LP is Get Your Hands Dirty. We actually released it on January the 3rd. Okay. Um, we kind of had like a plan. We knew nobody would drop a head knocker at the beginning of the year. I think everybody was trying to get their thing off on in the December, the fourth quarter. Yeah. So we decided to just come first quarter and, and see what happened. So we rolled the dice and I think we hit a triple 10. All right. Beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah. So um, let's see. This is your first record. Uh, I guess it's Dirt Platoon, your first full length in some years, though, right? Since 2015. Yeah, and, and, and five years, yeah. So since 2015, we dropped the Bareface Robbery album. We did with Efficients. We did it. We inked a little deal with Efficients back in 2011. So we dropped um, Start Your Bitch. That was like a six song EP. Then we did Warface. Um, that was produced by Kai Otachi. Then we came yeah. right back at him, and I smacked him with my solo album, my first solo album called Get the Fuck Out My Yard. Then after oh, get the fuck that. out of my yard, we came with that dirt platoon. Yeah. yeah, word. So what's the uh, what, what what was the premise with this uh, with the new LP, man? With the new record, get your hands dirty. Um, we be feeling like in this game and in, in game and any business in general, a lot of people don't like to put their neck out on the line. They don't like to get their hands dirty. They always need a buffer. It's all it's always a third party, somebody in between. And we just felt like, yo, we wanted to speak on that. We do everything ourselves. We cook it up here. We bag it here. We ship it off from Baltimore. So we just wanted to tell everybody we get our hands dirty and show the world that we get our hands dirty. Mm. And I think a lot of a lot, a, a lot of other people want to say that, but they just don't have the time. They don't put the effort into it. And some people just don't believe in themselves. So this was a record just to tell everybody who believes in themselves. You can do it yourself. Gotcha. Yeah, I like this information we got about the album cover. Um, on the song, on the cover of this album is a picture of the Domino Sugar Plant um, factory in Baltimore. Um, mm-hmm. I can appreciate that already, man. My my folks worked in a in a a, a paper mill in Memphis, Tennessee, for twenty years. Um, okay. Yeah, so I I get that concept right off the bat. Um, but one of the things that just popped in my mind was it was uh not that long ago where a plant burst into like exploded um yeah that uh, wasn't be more though that was i think nah, that was nah, in that, the that, south that wasn't here but i know what you're talking about i'm thinking that was like new jersey or something something was, like that on the east coast okay i think it, that was in georgia was was savannah coast, i think it was why, south the reason yeah. why we say that again i thought it was in the south like yeah, louisiana. Was louisiana or something it, maybe it, it might have been yeah. i don't know i don't I'm, I'm really not sure but i do remember that yeah. and i do remember something blasting off but the reason why we did that is because if you come to our city, we got a tourist spot called the Harbor. Okay. And when you go down, when you go down to the inner Harbor, that's where you can eat at. That's where you're going to take the girl at, take the kids at. Yeah. You get to see the water. You see the beautiful parts of Baltimore. But one thing that stick out in our skyline and in our landmark is the Domino Sugar sign. No matter yeah. where you go down the Harbor or down any part of Baltimore, downtown Baltimore, you're going to see that, that landmark. Yeah. And, Yo, they make the sugar here, they bag the sugar here, and they ship the sugar from here. That's you know what up. I mean? And mm-hmm. Baltimore is a blue-collar city. No doubt. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody really got no bread if you live in the city. Yeah. It's a white and black city. So, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no really no racial tension lines because everybody poor. And we got to do it ourselves here. So that's what we wanted to represent this year. We wanted to let everybody know we're we from B-more and we do it ourselves. And y'all get y'all hands dirty. We got it. <laughs> absolutely. Hell absolutely. Yeah. And then if you want to take it to the flip side, to the negative side, we also down to get our hands dirty that way too. So of course. We're gonna feed our family. Of course. Y'all don't y'all don't really care for that 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 one moniker, do you? That that body more. I I've I've heard I, I mean, it. I, I mean, you know, you know what it is. I think if you live in any urban city, like y'all say, like Savannah, y'all got Atlanta, yeah. y'all got 
Y'all got some grimy parts of y'all city yeah, too. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So any inner city, yo, you gonna have violence, you gonna have drugs, you gonna yeah. have the have not. So when you got a whole bunch of have nots, it's like in the jungle. You know what I mean? So the centipedes eat the ants, the, yeah. the tigers eat the monkeys. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? The the lions eat everything. So you know what I'm saying? So when you living in the city and you got a lot of have nots, you know, you're gonna have those things that happen and sometimes people represent the negative and not the positive. No doubt. And and just getting back to getting your hands dirty, man. Tell us a little bit about how the record came together, because you got a lot of a lot of featured guests on this record, from MCs to producers and whatnot. Talk about that a little bit. All right. Well, I go with the producer standpoint first. Well, we did. Um, we got Phil Sweetenberg. That's our brother. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We've been working with we've been working with Phil Sweetenberg since 2001. So this album, we actually wanted to showcase him because he's a dope spitter also. So we wanted to let the world know it's me and my bro, Snook the Crook, but also behind the scenes and, and helping us, it's Phil Sweetenberg. So we wanted to kind of push him to the forefront with us this year. So he did like five joints. Okay. Then we hooked up with a dude through my man, Guy Grams. He's a friend of a friend. Um, the dude named um, uh, fucking Napalm. Okay. And Napalm gave us the dude word beat that we featured Guilty Simpson on. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So then I think the last two beats, they're done by Deep Star. That's a dude we met through the Fishings deal. He's from actually from Australia, and he did a record with them. And we was checking out the beats. We was like, yo, all right, we ain't really cool with the spitting, but the beats is hard. Mm. And we started, we, we built a friendship with him, and he actually gave us three beats and mixed and mastered the album for us. Okay. Oh, so as far as production, that's how that went. As um, far as the MCs, Guilty Simpson, he came down to the city one day. He was doing a show. We opened up for him. We killed it. He stayed on stage. We burned out in the back like we always do, like MCs <laughs> always connect. And we, we made a bond, and he, he blessed us with a track. As far as OC, OC actually contacted us because he mentioned us and one of his, on one of his tracks on his latest album that he did. Oh, wow. And he wanted to make sure, yeah, he wanted to just make sure, call us, tell us what he did, tell us that he he, he been looking out, he, he, he hear us, he know what's going on, and he would like to do some music. So we jumped on that. That's got Black dope. Shark. Damn, that's dope. Um, I mean, that that's yeah. that's not your average everyday uh, call there, Raph. I nah. mean, how, no, 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 but you, I was trying to keep it fast, you know what I mean? But um, as far as OC, like how we grew up, I'm a fan first, you know Word, what I'm saying? It's yeah. Cook is my actual brother. Me and him are actually brothers. You right. know what I'm, I'm his older brother. So in our house, from 95 to 99, OC and Nas was our favorite. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So that Word Life album and that Illmatic album, Big time. both of them got the same amount of bang in our house. Yeah. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? So when people ask me, like, yo, who's your greatest? Sometimes they leave out OC. They forgot about mm-hmm. Time's Up. Yep. They forgot about, you know what I mean, Born to Live. They forgot about the Jules album that he dropped. A lot of people, they kind of like forget about the ITC, and I don't know how. But um, Agreed. OC always got banged in our house. And it was crazy for him to actually holler at us because I'm looking at this like, is this the real OC? <laughs> like, yo, nah, I got to hear your voice, motherfucker. Yeah, anybody real. can hack a, a <laughs> Instagram and say, yo, that DM you. Yo, you can call me here with my number. That's real. And call me. Wow. Yeah, he called me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We chopped it up. He said, yo, he, you know, from the 80s, you know, Brooklyn cast been coming down to Baltimore for years. And oh, yeah. like, yo, uh, uh, I appreciate y'all city. I appreciate the grime. Yo, we got on to y'all music. I fucked with y'all music. And I forgot the line that he said, but it's sort of like, you know, grimy, like, Dirk and tune and be more. So I'm like, what the fuck? Nah. <laughs> Damn, you know that's what I mean? Like, old Steve shot in his own? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, that's why the first single was Black Sharpies is kind of like an old to hip hop. You know what I mean? When um, we was coming up, if you were right with anything, you were right with a crayon, you were right with a pencil, the, your teacher's pen, but it was a blessing if you can write your rhyme with a black, crispy black shark. Right, right. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it was like, yo, who else will we have on that track but OC? No doubt. And last but not least, um, jumping over cars, um, Rusty Jets been family for years <laughs> since about 2008. You know what I'm saying? Actually, Sean Price, Rusty Jets, Duck Down is my family. They oh. Dirt Return is like their, their, their little begotten sons and shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? But we just never did any deals or business. But Rusty is a good friend of ours. We always, anytime we're doing something or anytime he's doing something, he holler at us. And uh, we felt like it was the time to just put him down on this one. And we did this jumping over cars and people love it. 
Yeah, that's dope. dope. Yeah, what up? What up to Rusty? Shouts out to Rusty yeah. Jucks, man. Yeah, yeah, he been killing it. He been killing it lately. I told oh, him yeah. the other day, like, yo, you can drop like fucking five, six albums in a year. Like, yeah, you a monster. I don't think he sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> nah, he, you know what I think he do? He get a little something, then he got the studio in the crib. So I think he just roll over, oh, grab yeah. the pen, and he had it. I well, we interviewed him last year, and I think what he told me, he's like, we, we, I don't leave the crib. Like this is what I do. Yeah. Like I literally, I like kind of like what you said, Ralph. Like yeah. I get up, roll out of bed, get something to eat. Yeah, and um, you know, I, I go to work, man. Yeah, man. So, um, last time I seen him, that's what we did. Yeah, grabbed a little something at the bodega. I grabbed my Hennessy. We went to the crib and we worked for like two hours. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah. That's how there you get yeah, it yeah, done. Yeah, we that's, we workaholics. We only like to work for workaholics. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like if if you hear dirt between them, anybody, because we, we we do features, but we don't really. Um, unless we respect you fans first. And we really only work with workaholics, bro. That's dope. Yeah. And how long did, oh, go ahead. Go uh, ahead I was going to ask you, uh, so that being said, how long did it take you guys to get this new record together, Rap? For real, um, we, we had the name probably in 2016. We know we wanted to name the new record, Get Your Hands Dirty. Okay. Um, the, real, the, the real thing was just, um, I put a record out, I put another solo record out in 2018. It's called For Everything That Means Something. We dropped a, a, our first mixtape in 2016, which is called God Made Dirt and Dirt Don't Hurt. And then we did a self-finance tour to Paris and with Ill Conscious and Got Grams. And we brought out a soundtrack called Paramore. So in these past four years, we've been working. We just never got the opportunity to put our album together. So when right. we started, I would say we probably started the end of 18, um, the middle summer of 18. And then we got it out. We rushed it out. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So yeah, yeah, we rushed that out. Term. So I'm going to say, maybe not. Let's not do it like that. Let's say the beginning of 18, because we had do work already out. Um, and the beginning of 18, we knew we wanted to do this. So maybe from like February to December, gotcha. we had it out. Gotcha. And then you had a joint out too with Guy Grams as well, right? What was that joint? Uh, Almighty uh, Grams. I forgot about that. Yeah. Then I worked on the Almighty Grams with with Guy Grams. Like I yeah. can't put my pen down. So it's like yeah. when it comes down to me, I can't put my pen down. So yeah, yeah we just dropped that Almighty Grams in August. Yeah, that Almighty Grams is tough, man. I ended up. I think I ended up talking to Guy. Uh, yeah, I talked to Guy a little bit because we played a couple of joints actually off that record. Uh, Okay. Uh, Raph, yeah, man. I really fuck with that record actually. See, God Glams, that's that's my dude. He from I'm from West B more. He's from East Baltimore. Okay. But we like to get together. We like to get together at least once a week and we have a smoke out session. Oh, so yeah? one right. year we was just smoking and we was like, yo, what about letting the fans in on what we talk about when we smoke it? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We don't need a lot of songs. We just need to get together. Let's get together with a couple producers, put together something. So me and him really that took us maybe like 10 days, 15 days, because we smoke once a week, like I told you. So we always talking about shit. And that album just came out. Really, it was more like titles of the songs more than just the rhymes, because we had a lot right. to talk about. So I'm glad I'm glad you picked up on that. Um, for our sales, that album did good. But it's like now people catching on. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. they like, damn, Raph, I like, yo, I fuck with that 420. Or, damn, yo, that machine gun fuck is hard, Raph. I just had to put that back yeah. in. So, yeah. yeah, it's like everybody going back and grabbing that. So, I respect y'all for that. Thank it you. was 420. That's, remember that joint mix? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah. When he yeah, just yeah. said it. Yeah, 420. Yeah. That's produced by Phil Sweetenberg, too. Which yeah, yeah. 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 No that was a joint. And, and Raph, I don't smoke. And I, after, we, uh, after we got done playing, I was just like, shit, man, I think I'm going to start smoking after <laughs> hearing that joint. <laughs> I was like, that yeah, shit you know makes me want to smoke. You know what that was? That was that was <laughs> imaginous, right? Me and him sitting down, and we like, well, fuck it. We need a joint that we know we don't even have to tell the crowd to give us crowd and response. Right. Yeah. Once we start, once Ill starts seeing the hook, because yeah. I wrote the hook, and the way I wrote the hook, and I know Ill conscious with his smooth voice, yo, once Ill step up there and start kicking the hook, they're going to automatically, because it's so easy, start responding yeah, back at yeah. him. And that's yeah. exactly what happens. So when we say roll last shit, they yeah. like roll last right, shit. Right, you know, yeah. Like, you, you know what I mean? We was in here doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, God damn. Yeah, I, they yo, got when one. I wrote that, that's how I I wrote it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I wrote it just looking from a fan perspective more. You know what right. I mean? Did you do a video for that, Raph? If you didn't, you need to yeah, do we one. Did. We actually did. did a, you did do a video. Did okay. Do a video. We, yo, we went, to, we went to Philly, hooked up with Scoop Chase, hit that little sneaker store that they got in Philly, that little 
dope ass in the store that everybody go to. Okay. And they let us just smoke out in the back and shoot the video. Oh, word. I, I got I, I to gotta go back and look <laughs> at that. Dope. Yeah, yeah. And, dope. Then, and then a dude that was buying, this is crazy, a dude that bought sneakers, he was like a rich dude or something. He invited us back to his penthouse and we, we shot the rest of the video in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, real talk, real talk. That's crazy. It's the life for the Almighty Grand. Where it's from? That's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, Man, Rev, I wanted to Philly. I wanted to ask you about the 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 family aspect y'all bring to the table of y'all being brothers. You and you and Snook being brothers. Um, okay. me, me and my brother, we 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 mess around in two different chambers of hip hop. He's a DJ. Uh, top DJ in the city, as a matter of fact. I'm from Memphis. I, I had to give it to my brother, man. I don't know nobody else get down like him. Um, Shout and out then, to Memphis, no man. Doubt. And then I'm an MC. We have yet to make that connection, though, um, as far as us like doing some songs together or, or, or whatever. Uh, okay. I, I imagine it's still going to happen. But what is what is that what is that like? What's, what's, the, what's the feel there like? Being brothers, Yo, you know, growing up in the same know, house, y'all like the same shit. shit. You it's know what crazy. I'm saying? Like me and my brother was the, the type to fight. You know what I'm okay. saying? We always fought each other. But my mom's always used to say, like, don't fight outside. But we so tense, emotional with each other that we would fight, motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to embarrass <laughs> me. You're going to always represent us right. And that's that goes vice versa. Yeah. But when it came to our natural glue in the crib and being punished, because we got punished a lot. Mom Dukes never took the radio. So we always had tapes. We always had hip hop. And me and my brother, we uh, always combined things, came together on like cartoons or hip hop. Okay. We maybe not blend on the same friends. We definitely don't like the same girls. You know what I mean? But when it comes down to hip hop, we always blend. And I got an older cousin. We got an older cousin, but he was raised in our house as our older brother. Shout out to Raggedy, rest in peace. And he's the one that introduced us to hip hop. The real hip hop, the above the laws, the MCH. Because mm. when we was coming up, we was listening to East Coast and West Coast music and be more. Oh yeah, okay. you understand what I'm saying? Like we, it, the fucking not, nah, don't get it twisted either. Like Ghetto Boys, real heavy. Oh yeah, Three Six, real heavy up here. Like oh, yeah. be more represent down south music. We love y'all down there. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because most of us, or most of our grandmas migrated from down there. Exactly. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just settled in be more because we got you got to think back in the day, you know. Yo, nope, we lose him. Are you there, Raph? I'm here. Oh, okay. there. Yeah, you, you yeah, cut, you, you out cut for out. A second. Yeah, yeah. You just all right, all right, so but but what happens is like my big bro, he kind of introduced us to the game. He taught us how to write. He taught us how to have our little talent shows in the house. Because when I was writing, I was writing around the ages of ten. So like ABC was out, and the youngsters was out, and oh, yeah. uh, fucking Chris Cross um, and all that. Quo and fucking Quo. yeah, yeah. Quo. Holy Chris shit. Cross, all of them was out. So <laughs> when I used to rhyme, I used to write my rhymes to battle them. Right, and right. Crook, you feel me? And Crook used to be my little hype man, but. <laughs> Crook, you know, Dave's always the trouble. That's why his name Crook. And he came home. When he came home and he was like in his late teens, they was telling me like, yo, you know your brother, Ron? I'm like, no, he don't be in the same fucking house. You know? <laughs> he, he tell me if my Ron felt good, but he don't be rhyming. And sure enough, my brother was rapping. And I was like, he Damn. stepped me down. We, we had a session and he told me he was ready to do this. And Derpatoon was established since 1995. Me and Raggedy made that name. We never changed the name. We knew that hip hop would always stay rugged, no matter how people dressed, no matter how people were spitting. We know rugged rhymes and raw beats was always going to be the fucking blueprint to hip hop. So we never changed the name. Um, Crook, he wound up stepping up, and now you have it. You had a Derpatoon. Since 2010, we've been stomping the gold. Dope. Mm. So neither one of you guys were uh, uh, kind of on the production side of things, like beat wise. You never, had some, okay. never, never. We well, well, we come from the era where we used to be. You know, my mama might be playing a dope ass soul sample, and I say, "Yo, mom, where that's from?" And she let me have a CD, and I take right. it to my producer, and he sample exactly. So you can say we co-produce the music, sure. but we don't. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we absolutely. know what a funky beat sound like. Yeah. yeah. So how'd you guys end up connecting with Fel? What's the What's the connect there? Wow, um, be more, yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm a street dude, and um, his cousin was just one of my friends who used to always be out on the block, and I was always known from rap. Oh, you there, Raph? We lost you again. 
Yo, can you hear me again? Yeah, now can you hear me? Me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, well um, yo, I met Fell through his cousin, you know what I'm saying, just being out on the streets. And he was telling me, he was like, yo, I got a, a cousin and he can produce. Um, yo, this was 2001. We all met in a basement. He hooked his MPC to a boombox and oh, played shit. his beats. Do you know what I mean? He, he played like beats for five hours and rhyme with me. And um, I called my brother down. My brother came down. We had like a 10-hour session, no bullshit all night, drinking 40s and getting blunted. <laughs> and ever since then, ever since then, we've been fucking with Fel. But we actually, Fel was part of a group called the uh, Break Bread, and it was called the Nut House. Um, they used to tour with the Slum Village. They used to tour with Diggable Planets, shit like that. Oh, I remember and the yeah. Nut House. Yeah, I didn't realize he yeah. was a part of that. Yeah, yeah, that's Fel Sweetenberg, Dave Ghetto, and Next Millennium. Ah. So they had like... Yeah, they invited us up to Camden, New Jersey, 2004. We basically stayed up there a whole year. Mount E from in Camden, New Jersey. Shout out to Camden. And we recorded an album called Operation 410. You know oh, what I mean? Man. And then from there, from there, we never lost touch with Fell. Anytime we did something from 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we always incorporated Fell because we knew he was like one of the dopest producers in the world. Wow. Damn, that's hell. Oh uh, yeah, that's crazy. So you guys have been, you guys a lot have of been history there. Yeah, a lot of history there. Yeah, yeah. We come from Baltimore, like and be more. I was a little, you know, you know how they, like I said, like the ABC days and the youngster days. Rap Almighty was the little MC and be more that was crushing shit. You understand what I'm saying? So when we used to have ciphers, like I told you on the harbor, we used to have this big ass waterfalls down there. And if you was from any hood, you would just meet down the harbor on Fridays or Saturday nights and you get your spit on. And I was like a little 12 and 10 and 11 year old nigga down there just crushing grown ass mm. men. You know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. teenagers to me. They was grown men to me, but they was like 18, 19. And so I got their return come from out the the battle in the real battle in days, the real ciphers, the real guards and the pieces. You know what I mean? Like we come from the real grind and shit. So yeah. when it comes down to us making music, we know exactly how to do it because we followed all the steps. Wow. Hmm. So what's your take on things nowadays, Raph, with the kind of this rejuvenated, um, I hate to even like put a label or term on it. I know what you're trying to say. I know what you're trying to say. You know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you think about all this? I told you, we from from 1995, remember 96 and 97 and 98, hip-hop was kind of, you don't know where it was at. Yeah. You feel me? Like, yo, we always come here. You know what I'm saying? We always get to a point where real hip-hop start, you know, overshadowing all that poppy shit. That poppy shit can only last for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The the real elements of the game is breakdancing, writing, hard DJing. MC and you get what I'm saying? The style, oh, yeah. yo, the raw rugged style will never play out. Mm. So um, we just stick to our guns. And if we got like, this is our motto, yo, our core thousand fans or 2000 fans, as long as we make the music for them and yearly they pick up that music, we'll stay alive. Cause they'll right. always tell a friend and tell a friend. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Baltimore's showing out right now, man, between you and, Ill Conscious and Jay Royale and Jamil oh, Honesty yeah. and uh, I mean, there's just a I mean, you guys are really doing it right now, man. Where's that? It, has it always been there, or is this kind of rejuvenation got mm -hmm. folks motivated, or what's your take I mean, on that we, locally? It, we always been here, but what wound up happening in these past few years, we kind of um sat down and pulled everybody up and we had a meeting. And we told everybody, like, yo, we know they're looking at you. They're looking at you. We all just pointed at each other. We knew who they was looking at. And we decided to um, come together. We're not a group, so we don't have a name or anything like that. But just for instance, if you book Dirt Platoon, out of that 20 minute set, you're going to get some ill conscious, some God Graham, some J Royale, and Dirt Platoon. That's you right. You understand what I'm saying? So, so that's how we move, and that's how we've been moving. So, I like to hear that. You, book, you book ill conscious, you definitely going to see Dirt Platoon dropping something, J Royale kicking a verse, uh, fucking ill conscious, and, and God Graham's doing the track. And then you get back to ill conscious because that's the one you book. But between that, all in that, you're going to have all of us. And Not we've been doing that for like that. the past two, three years, and it's start working. Yeah. How'd the Paramore you know, thing together uh, kind of thing come together, man? Like, how'd you guys end up in Paris? And you know, I that told thing you since um, two thousand and two thousand and ten, me and my brother, no, two thousand yeah ten, we dropped the album called Deeper Than Dirt, and we started paying attention to the internet. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, 
Instagram, Facebook, all that shit. And we was reading the comments. And we got a comment from a dude from Paris, like, yo, we got dope. If y'all ever in New York, holler. We was like, we're always in New York. Um, and we met him. And there was a dude named DJ Loscar from a label called Efficient. Yo, they took us to the studio that night and me and my brother recorded three songs and they faced they never seen that shit happen before. You know what I mean? They're like, what? Yeah, uh-huh. we always in for them. And so what wound up happening is we recorded that EP with them in 2010 and they flew us to Paris 2011. And me and my brother was going to Paris like every other year since then. So what we uh-huh. did is um, we never did, we did an album called War Fate with this dude named Kyle Otachi, but we never performed it in Paris. Mm. So in, t- in 2018, they called for us and was like, hey, can y'all come do a show? And we said, fuck it. And we're not booking us a couple shows. Like I said, if you book us, you get ill conscious and got grams. So we wanted to pick them with us. And as we jumped, as soon as we jumped on the plane, we turned on the camera and we didn't turn the camera off until we got back on the plane. Yeah. So we went over there and we, we did the shows. We taped everything. We put out a documentary and then we put Paramore out to follow it. So it's like the soundtrack to the documentary. Yeah, that shit's dope, man. That shit's so we, so we basically self-financed it. So how we made it over there was due to dudes booking us and we took their money and put it back into ourselves. Nice. There you go. That's yeah. how you do it. Hey Ralph, go back yeah. for a second, man. Going back to to that 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 meeting, that powwow y'all had with with all the monsters and be more, man. Who's whose idea was that? Because you don't you don't hear about that a lot, and I wish I wish more people would come together like that. Like who who initially came up with that concept and 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 decided to take you know the ego out of it and 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 break bread like the the whole concept of breaking bread in the city. Well, well, like I told you, um, we friends first. Yeah. So Cook is my brother, so I know where his mother lived at. He can't escape me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Got Graham's, yeah, Got Graham's been my man. I met Got Graham's back when we was doing the Deeper Than Dirt album. Yeah. So I've been doing with Graham's for over 10 years now. So th- this is before we even start doing music together, anything. He the, he the dude with the smoke, you know what I'm saying? So if you want some good smoke and be more, you want to holler at Graham's. So we always tight. So... He was always in a friendship. Um, we know Ill Conscious manager, okay. whose name is Marcus. Marcus always been around us for years, and he always telling us about Ill Conscious. And ever since we met him, we fell in love with him. So Ill has been around. Jay's always been around. You know, just through the scene in the city. Jamal and Honesty, he actually produced a couple beats for us. We we met Jamal Honesty as a producer. His name was Maccabee. Okay. And, um, yes, that's right. Yeah, you know, he got with us. Yeah, Maccabee, he actually wanted, um, he produced a joint called Inmate off of the Bareface Robbery. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, that's Jamil Honesty. That's mm-hmm. Jamil Honesty, but it's his, 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 I guess you guys say his alter ego was Maccabee, the producer, and yeah. he did that beat for Yeah, all right, don't. Yeah, what up, Jamil? So, so, we, so we, all, we all know each other. So what wound up happening is that when we had these shows and they keep trying to book us, they were trying to book us, would be scared, but would be scared to put us all on the same card because we monsters. Like, it was egos, but we were telling them, like, <laughs> no, if, nigga, if you want to book your concert, you can book us too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right. so the, 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 the killer promoters um, and just to fuck everybody head up, we said, well, look, no matter whoever they book, we we'll always give each other a song or we we'll blend the sets together. I love And we that. just started doing that. You I know what I mean? Because you know where yeah, we really stuff. make money at? Yeah. The merch tape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you come to a, a, a DP show, you're going to see a ill merch table because yeah. you're going to have the almighty Graham shit, the oh, ill conscious shit, the Royale vinyl, the Dirt Return t-shirts, yeah. the hoodies and the albums, the more honesty of he around. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, the way I a, see it, a, a the way I see it, y'all start making the money with that mindset and then everything Absolutely. just, yeah, everything just fall into place after that. I love that, man. That's the dopest shit, man, ever. I love that, man. And we come from where we come from, that's unheard of. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Every, everybody feel like they the hottest or everybody feel like they got something or they, they holding something back because they got one up on you. And we said, fuck mm-hmm. that. What if we just share our resources? Watch what happens. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So what's in store for you guys the rest of 2020, man? Anything you can you can speak on? We're actually about to go on tour. We're getting a, um, a European tour right now. You know what I'm saying? So we get in the dates together, starting March the 18th. We do got some shows locked in. So you'll catch us in Paris. You'll catch us in Switzerland. You'll see us in Germany. They actually trying to book us in Bulgaria. I didn't even know they was fucking with us all the way over. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Did I yeah, see you're going to yeah. be on a tour with Raskaz? Yeah. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Razzcast, we'll hook up with Razzcast in Germany, and I think we hook up with him in, like, Handle. Okay, all right. You know, like, shit. I'm trying to put this shit together, you know what I mean? Like, because sometimes I'll be bugged out when they just hit us and saying, we fuck with you. I'm like, I've seen this shit on the map and never thought I would even have to. <laughs> yeah, right. You gotta be wild. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now I got y'all motherfuckers. It really fucked my head up back in the day, yo. We dropped Warface, and people were sending us DMs of them in like war torn countries like Siberia and Kuwait and Iraq with our album. Oh, you know what shit. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yo. We got people in Africa and little huts that sent us po- uh, put like DMs and shit, and they say, don't send them a white shirt so it don't get dirty. You give them wow. so they'll take any they'll take any dark color because every time they walk it's dust and sand and you, it's crazy, dude. Wow. It's, it's, this shit is wild, yo. Like hip hop is everywhere. Believe me when I tell you this. That's yeah, real, no doubt. Dang. That's dope. See, Believe you, me when I tell you this. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, you got man. fucking people that just you. They call, they hit me and just to say, yo, I, is this really you? I'm like, yeah, this really me, fucker. You know what I'm saying? My daughter right now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask me your questions so I can get back to real life. No dude. doubt. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Rav, let me you ask know, you I this. I wish back in the day I could hit Red Man and I'm up and say, yo, what's up? Yo, I'm spending Yeah, right. right. I know, right? <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> Shit's so crazy now. Raph, let me ask you this. With y'all being 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 able to travel uh over the years mm-hmm. and and everything like that, have y'all experienced um some of the um, finer things and not in, not in, really in nah, I wasn't even going that route. Just uh I was trying to try not to pull the race card out, but I you can't yeah, fucking yeah. help it. Just being over Call these, it yeah, European countries and bringing the culture over there, the, the way y'all bring it. Have y'all experienced any negativity? Has anybody? Nah, no, I, I can't say. All nah. love. To me, I think over there, and, and I know a lot of people, if y'all haven't heard, black people are held in high regards other places than here. Have heard that. But you know, there's you know always, I mean? you know, there's always one, though. You know what I mean? Nah, I think. I, I think my face, I walk around with a gorilla face and my brother do too. So I think more people will be more intimidated to say anything than will say anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't get those white drunk dudes saying, fuck you, nigga. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, nothing like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I got too many white homeboys. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We got, we, it, you can't, we can't have that in 2020. I think that's a bias. Dude. My kids don't talk how we came up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My, t- my kids talk a little proper. My kids watch different TV shows and they're more advanced and, and, and more shit is more presented to them now, you know, than back in the day. So if you still on that racist card shit or that prejudice shit, yeah. you're old school for real. No Kinda doubt. Extent. No doubt. All right. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. so experiencing or saying something racist to us, you're gonna get punched in your mouth. So I, I, there it I is. advise people don't do that. Shit. Yeah, don't do that shit. <laughs> you don't, yeah, you don't, you do don't want them shit. problems. I'm not gonna do that shit to you. That's worse than saying like "fuck your mother." You know what I mean? Right. No doubt. I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere foreign, and you saying "fuck me, nigga" in a different language, looking aggressive. My first reaction is to smash your face, and, and I don't want to do that. I'm on social. There it is. That's right. No, I mean, no, it is. So, Ralph, what what else you got for the people, man? Anything you want to get off your chest, or anything you want to say, or what we always like to give everyone um, on the I floor? I appreciate, here. I appreciate everybody, yo, for this, man. It's, if we dropped the album on January the third, today is February the third. They still talking about it oh, in yeah. this day and age of hip hop. Yo, they listen to your album for three days, and then after that, you washed up. Oh they yeah, been out shit for. Yeah, they've been begging out shit for a month, so I appreciate everybody. Thanks everybody for support. Um, yo, y'all people supporting us, they don't know yo, they pay our bills and feed our kids. So we need this. So thank y'all. Yeah, that's real. Word. Thank y'all. Southern Vanguard for oh, taking yeah. y'all time out and then investing in equipment and making podcasts and calling people and just supporting and loving the art. You know what I mean? We need things like this. So I appreciate y'all brothers too. I paid attention to y'all for like a year and so and like y'all said I made y'all y'all list. I was waiting for a Durkature name, I guess, to make it on the list. I appreciate <laughs> making y'all list. Oh yeah. Word. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean Absolutely, we man. we know it when we hear it, Raph. So it was only a matter of time, man. Thank y'all. Thank yeah. y'all. So that's really all I want to say. And what we Word. got coming up from next we got this, this Get Your Hands Dirty, more videos, more music coming from that. After this, we got the Smith the Crook album coming out. The his first solo album is called Thieves Cold. Probably after that, we'll drop another Dirt Baton album. We do have the title to that. That's Ringworms. And um, 
at the end of the year, I might drop that last Raph Almighty album, the Cujo album. Yeah, I was just gonna say, man, uh, you and uh, you and the guy need to go back in too, man. I think we we to- actually got the first beat. That's crazy you say that. You know, okay. like two days ago, a, a producer, because the way we did it, we just got with some former producers and told them to give us some shit. Yeah. But this dude sent us a banger. Okay. A banger banger. Like, he's like, yo, I wanted to make the first Almighty Grams I couldn't, but listen to this. And I said, yo, this dude must have waited a year to send us this, and this shit is worth it. Yeah, right. I, I fuck with that last so we record, man. Yeah. We yeah, might you, go back in. You got to, we might, I got to get a title for the album, though. We don't want to come back out as, you know, it's the Almighty Grand, but we need a title for this album. Yeah, yeah, dope. Yeah, do that, man. I'm, I'm waiting on it. I, you guys have, your, your chemistry's great, man. I, I really fuck with that record. It's just dope. And then, you know what we did that for, too? I want y'all to pay attention. We're going to be start doing a lot of, like, them smoke festivals. I did that as a marketing tool. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? We might we might come out with the Almighty Grams rolling papers, um, have our face on a couple bombs and bowls, and oh, you just see us at a lot of those he- festivals with that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that's invited hip-hop. It's not scary. So, like, that question the bro asked me, like, any, any you know, did, we, did you feel any racism with an album like that? You're, you're hitting the hippies and you're hitting oh, yeah. the peace movement yeah. and it's all love and they like to spend their money after they hop. That's no doubt. <laughs> you know what no I mean? <laughs> so, you know, hopefully we'll have y'all with some almighty grand rolling papers there and a bong and t-shirts and all that shit. No my, doubt. Mike convinced me to start smoking, Meeks. You never know. Yeah, we got, hey, yo, we got if you, you do, If you do, just smoke some good shit. Yeah. Yeah. And just <laughs> once in a while. Just yeah. recreational. Just to free hey, your mind. Don't you know just send the papers and the bong. Send that shit, too. Now, we're going <laughs> to yeah, need, we we gonna need we some. Got, <laughs> yo, see, look, like I told you, we do it ourselves. So we got to make sure it's in the budget. You know what I'm saying? If it's in the budget, we can do that. And heads up, they they do a 420 <laughs> fest here in Atlanta, man. Look That's out right. for it. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah. Sweet water we trying to get down there, man. We trying to get down there on some show shit. Like, even if we we get down there, yo, and y'all just put us up on a show or something. Like I said, we make our money at the merch table. We just trying to come across a couple stages down there. I, I, I want to come to Atlanta, yo. We got somebody we can put you in touch with. It's nothing. Yeah, we yeah, got definitely. You. Definitely. And y'all got my direct contact. Yeah, okay. definitely put us in touch. We'll, we'll oh, make yeah. it to Atlanta. That's nothing. You know okay. what I'm saying? Just give us somewhere to crush the stage. Make sure the mics is right, though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We always. don't fuck around, man. Right. We got that. All right. Yeah, man. Always, always. All right, Raph. So we were talking about spending money just a few minutes ago. Tell the folks where they can go spend money on Dirt Platoon and, you know, the whole movement. Well, you can hit us up on any social media website. That's just Dirt Platoon. We got Dirt Platoon, www.dirtplatoon.com. That's the newest joint running. You can get everything from the past albums to the new album from the t-shirts to the sweatsuits and then yo we some regular dudes so you can catch us outside you can holler at me i'm not a scary person tap me on the shoulder but look i come from b more so that uh coronavirus shit we got some hardy shit on the street that i hurt you worse than that so (laughs) tap me on the shoulder (laughs) let me know that you want to cock the album scream out the window yo i'm here you know what i'm saying catch us in the alley near you so any social uh media website or www.dirtturn.com Word, all right. Raph, thank you, man. It was a real pleasure. Thank y'all, brothers. Yo, I appreciate this, yo. This is something that was on my bucket list last year. I posted that touch bases with y'all, but Word. finally we made it. So Southern Vanguard, yes, congratulations sir. for y'all fifth year. Yes, congratulations sir. on me being a two hundred and something fucking interview. That's right. and congratulations on two hundred and forty, <laughs> which I say two forty two. Two forty two this week. Two forty two, yo, that's yeah. a blessing, yo. Some people don't get two. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and you know Raph, I mean? right now I know you're a real B more cat. The way you just said two, so I, it's yeah, official dude, now. No, we say duck, we say two, we say do I call a cigarette a cigarette? We call it a fuck. You know what I mean? We got a whole new slang up there. I love <laughs> it. Good. I love it. I love All it. Good man. We appreciate All right, Raph, you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank y'all, yo. Enjoy y'all night, man. And you too. Everybody listening to Southern Vanguard, this Raph Almighty Derby Tunes. Look, yes, no sir. Doubt. We'll be in touch, my man. Peace, peace Raph. All right, peace. <laughs> yeah, man, too. <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, I have to admit, I, I, I was not aware of uh, of that. 
until we interviewed Jay Royale a couple years yeah, ago, and yeah. I was like, "Where is this two nah, shit coming it's serious. from?" It's serious. Uh, and then when I heard Raf uh, on that shit tonight, I was just like, "It's that Baltimore yeah, shit, man." Shouts out to DJ Pocket. Pocket let it slip every now and then. And, I've uh, never heard Pocket say that. Yeah, he let it slip every now and then. Shouts out to uh, uh, Clayway. Clayway, OGB, more. Dude. Oh yeah. yeah, he was always on that. Yeah, he got it. He 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 got it for real. He got it like, for real. Like, yeah, he, he can't he can't yeah. shake it. Nah, he yeah. can't shake it. <laughs> Shouts out to Clayway, man. Word. All yeah. right. Dirt Platoon, get your hands dirty. Get your hands dirty, man. Ugh. It's everywhere. Go yeah. cop it. Drop January. What did you say? January, January 3rd? 3rd. It's been out a month. They've been so. rocking with it. Yeah, they yeah, beat, sure they beat the expiration out. date. You're he right. Said, he said more than he three said, days. He's more generous than you are. Yeah, you know mine. You said you know, two weeks. Mine, mine is 14 days. 14 days. Yeah, they passed all of he that shit, so days. it must be dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, man, big up Jerry Graham. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, this is a Smithsonian grade. We got twice you covered, week. Jerry. We did it again, man. <laughs> <laughs> we are the guard. It's Dois Meeks. Southern Vanguard Radio. Peace. Yeah, peace, y'all. 